Hello and welcome to the Social Recruiting Show. I'm Katrina Collier. I speak, train and write about the use of social media for recruitment. Today, of course, I'm joined by my co-host, Audra Knight, who is a recruitment marketing strategist. And today, our special guest is Stephen O'Donnell, who is founder of the Noras and, of course, True London. And today we're talking candidate journey and why fucking it up is not good for you. Oops, I shouldn't swear. But anyway, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Audra. How are you? I'm better well indeed, thanks. I'm tickety boo. Oh, good. Will you give us a little background of your career history and tell us about PC Evaluate? Yeah, absolutely. I am uh, an old school recruiter. I've been in recruitment almost 30 years. Uh, so uh, back in your the vintage. olden days, well, very much vintage coming back into Vogue. Uh, and uh, uh, back when there were no PCs, everything was on cards and paper and oh. so on. Uh, but in uh, most of that time owning and running recruitment agencies. But in 2000, I started a website called alljobsuk.com, which was basically a database of every recruiter in the UK, every recruitment firm, every employer, every job board and so on. Uh, and from that sprung the National Online Recruitment Awards, uh, which you can see a couple of here. Uh, so the NORA, the NORA has been going since 2001. This will be our 16th year. And on account of the NORAs, uh, the NORAs are basically nominated by candidates, by job seekers themselves. So uh, we, we don't, we're not too interested in companies submitting themselves. We, they don't have to have agencies to submit details to us. We ask candidates to tell us what they think about agencies, employers, job boards, and so on. Uh, and on account of that, I probably road test maybe six or 700 separate recruitment websites each year as a candidate. Uh, so oh, I'll, my I'll, God. I'll read I'll register, I'll search for jobs, I'll apply for jobs yep. to see what it's like from a candidate's point of view. So I'm very much on the candidate side. I, 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 I'd hesitate to say I'm a candidate's champion, but I'm on the candidate side. And I know that the candidates get a pretty raw deal a lot of the time. So obviously, you know, because we've talked about this before, my favorite thing to do, which I love doing at conferences, which I stole off Steve Ehrlich at AIA, is to actually yeah. get recruiters up applying for a job on their own career site on their mobile phone. And obviously, mm. we know the restrictions in mobile make it so difficult. And it's very, obviously, very amusing to me to watch their frustration. Yeah. But do you see that as being the only problem? Or what else is going wrong with this, the whole candidate uh, there are application? And, uh, well, uh, in the first place, uh, I think maybe three years ago, we put in a rule for the NORAs that uh, no site uh, that, it was, sorry, any site that wasn't uh, usable on a mobile phone uh, would just be ruled out entirely from the notice if they oh, weren't mobile. Wow. They, wow. Would, they, would, they would just be excluded straight away. Yeah. Now, we haven't yet gotten to the point where all sites must be mobile apply friendly. Uh, we know that more and more yeah. are, uh, but uh, for some companies and some sectors, that's frankly a, a bit trickier than others. Mm. Uh, but certainly, job boards. If job boards don't have mobile apply, then that's a big no no. Uh, employers, we can we, we we can look the other way to an extent, mm. and small companies maybe they don't have the technology, and so they don't have uh, the setup for that. So we can forgive certain uh, uh, problems there, but for the most part, uh, the problems that there are in uh, in online recruitment application mm. from a candidate's perspective, they're they're not just down to the technicalities of applying for a job online. They're really to do with what has always been the problem with candidates uh, searching for and applying for jobs uh, in that mm. the theater of recruitment means that uh, for, a, for a start, whenever a candidate applies yeah. for a job, the company assumes that the candidate already wants the job. The candidate doesn't want the job. They haven't found out enough information to decide whether they want the job yet. They're interested in finding out more. But they're not, they're not yet ready to commit themselves. So when a candidate applies, basically, basically they're saying, I want to know more. Can I sit down and have a chat with you? Can you give me more information? Mm -hmm. But, of course, the employer deals with the application in that, that, that one-way direction. They think it's all down to them to simply score out the candidates that are not of interest to them. And the employers are rarely aware or rarely conscious of the fact that candidates are ruling them in and out uh, based mm -hmm. on what the employers do. So when an employer treats them in a certain way, a candidate will, and particularly those candidates, people talk about passive candidates all the time, but yeah. candidates who are maybe not entirely sold on working for a certain employer, candidates who need to be persuaded, yeah. uh, candidates who are much in demand, those candidates, frankly, can afford to be fussy. 
and the sectors where candidates are able to be much more fussier mm. if they're uh, 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 IT developers, if they're you know particular types of accountants and so on. Surveyors, and so on. nurses. Mm. I mean, there's so many and skill sets. Right, doctors. Right, right, right across the board. Mm. So up until fairly recently, uh, frankly, employers could get away with treating candidates like shit mm. uh, because there was no pushback, and no one would know. But of course, uh, all over the internet these days, it's really easy for a candidate to make things known about how they feel about the application process. Mm. Uh, going back to when I was an old school recruiter, I would often have clients who were awful at interviewing, but great employers. And I would have to, I would have to prep the candidates for interview and say, "Look, this guy you're going to see for interview, he's terrible. He's awful at interviewing." <laughs> Uh, is entirely inappropriate. You'll ask all the wrong questions. This is how you have. To, this is yeah. how you have to manage. Because it was worth it. Yeah, because he's a good guy and it's a good company. He's mm. just a complete idiot when it comes mm. to recruiting, and the company have a terrible process. So often, I'll try and I try to insulate the candidates from the process. Yeah. But nowadays, uh, recruiters are far less able to do that because mm. the process is, in a lot of ways, hijacked by the technical uh, uh, parts that are involved. So w whether candidates are applying online or they're mm. going through uh, ATS systems or they're taking assessments and so on, mm. it's often the case that, that professional recruiters are less involved in that part of the process. Mm. Uh, and in fact, I would say in my experience that a lot of recruiters these days are not seeing that as their responsibility to uh, to to mm. make mm. to make the, the, not so much make excuses for the employer, but to uh, uh, make the full picture known to the candidate that if the, if a company looks terrible because of their hiring process, that's not the best representative sample of what this employer is all about. Yeah, but so, taking that back. Oh, I'm echoing. Oh, I'm echoing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's not good. It's not good. Can you hear me? Mm. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Yep. I've, I'm echoing. I, I've stopped. Oh, thank God. I hate that. Um, <laughs> but taking it back a step. So it yeah. was back then, it was isolated. Here's your hiring manager. Only you knew that and you could protect it. Whereas, of course, now, it, in a, and it's not just Indeed mm -hmm. and Glassdoor where job seekers are going yeah. and saying all of this because it's out there anyway. So on top of what you're saying with recruiters not feeling it's their responsibility, I think it's yeah. almost it's beyond that anyway. Because if, if you sent me a, a, a notification or sent me an email or gave me a call about a job, about a company, I would look that company up. Yeah before yes, I replied exactly. or applied. I'd do it way, yeah. way, way before I even started the journey through. And I yeah. think job seekers do do that. Quick Google search. They're doing, it, they're doing it much more so now, but what you have to remember is that every company that there is, whether it's you know public sector, private sector, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Audrey, I think someone's creeping in your door there. <laughs> Love cat. It's swung open like that. <laughs> uh, sorry. Love every cat. employer, whether, whether they're, uh, uh, you know, it'd be a particular industry mm. sector or location yeah. or, uh, or or profession, mm. uh, they all they all exist in a bubble. So mm. if you were, say you worked in, in the semiconductor industry, yeah. uh, the other companies in the semiconductor sector uh, are very well known to you. Mm. You'll know who your competitors are. You'll yeah. know where you're hiring people from. Yeah. And it's a relatively small bubble of people. So when they're hiring for a quality engineer, for example, mm those candidates are likely to only come from a relatively small pool. Yeah. Uh, so in that in that pool or in that bubble, everyone hears everything that's going on. Mm. You know, I would never work for that company or I, I would give my eye teeth to work for that company. Yeah. So if, if you think your reputation's not going around town, it, is. it, it absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, and and w when people go from one company to another with the same cluster of, of, uh, of companies in that sector, mm. then they're taking reputation with them. So, they, they, you know, they, if they work somewhere that was terrible and they go to work somewhere that's better, then in company B, mm. everyone's going to hear about it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, your reputation management is really important. So uh, I, I gave an example of that last week. So I stayed at Hotel Boss in Singapore. And yes. um, Hotel Boss is fine. I mean, yeah, it could be a bit cleaner, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I looked it up on Facebook because I thought that would be awesome for my presentation. Let's see what people are mm -hmm. saying. Because you know, they, they, yes. they, they would attract staff through Facebook, like the Marriott do, et cetera. And mm -hmm. sure enough, there are people going, okay, yeah, bad enough the rooms are small. 
and it could be a bit cleaner, but oh my God, the management's so bad. And these are people yeah. who are buying the product as in the hotel room saying that. And I was just like, that people need to check that as well. But I just think so many employers are just so naive and think, oh, no one's checking them out. Mm. It doesn't matter. But like you well, it does. Well, you see, up, up, up until now, uh, uh, employers could get away with it. And and mm. frankly, a lot, of, a lot of employers still get away with it because candidates need the work. You know, people are applying for a job often, you know, because they're out of work mm. or they're about to be out of work or they hate where they're working right now. So they're not in a position to be as fussy as they'd like to. Mm. Uh, but for those those hard to get candidates, you better believe they're being as fussy as, mm. as, as they would be. Uh, at the core of the problem of all, all uh, uh, reputation uh, and, uh, and what candidates think about employers, mm. I would say is actually the 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 means by which companies go through that process. As I said at the start, mm. when a company advertises a job, they believe that everyone will want that job yeah. straight away who applies. But the inter the, the interview process, the application process, mm. and so on, uh, is all predicated on that that false assumption. Mm. Uh, and when a candidate comes for interview. Uh, both sides assume that the other is lying. So when I go to an employer for an interview, yeah. and the employer Love says, it. it's fabulous to work here, yeah. uh, the package is great, everyone loves it, no one leaves, you'll retire from this company, mm. uh, then a candidate has to somehow sift that and think, oh yeah, you're exaggerating, and now I've got to work out the extent to which you're exaggerating. In the same way as a hiring manager is looking at a candidate and saying, okay, you said you managed this project and you made your company mm. uh, a gazillion dollars and you grew your team from zero to 500 in five minutes yeah. let's work out the extent to which you're lying so both <laughs> sides are assuming that the other is lying yeah. and it's an adversarial situation mm. where you know, neither is telling the truth so <laughs> if, if you can boil it, well if you can boil it back down to you know, in, in all recruitment there are three things that need to come together yeah. there's a candidate uh, there's an employer and there's a job. Mm. That's as simple as it is. Yeah. Uh, and all the other stuff is just stuff that gets in the way of that. Mm. All you need to do is bring those three things together. Now, I am a firm believer that the most accurate predictor of how a candidate is going to be in a job yeah. is the candidate themselves. Ask them. Mm. In an interview, mm. people, companies are often interviewing a candidate, and what they're, they're doing is they're looking for clues. Mm. They're looking to find out, uh, right, I'll assume that your CV is mince. That's rubbish. Uh, I'll assume that you're lying to me. Let's just, let's just try and dig underneath and find out the truth. But in actual fact, if you can set the tone that the truth is okay, hmm. uh, then you can believe far more what the candidate is saying. And so when you say to a candidate, look, I'm going to spell out what's involved in the job in absolutely truthful terms. Can you tell me, are you able to do this job? Can you do this well? How can you explain how well you can do this job? Hmm. Then a candidate is the most, in that situation, is the most accurate predictor of how successful they're going to be in the job. Mm. Just ask. Don't trick them. Don't try and, you know, dig under to get to make them reveal the truth when they're revealing the truth in the first place. Mm. Uh, psychometric assessments are, 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 are very good. And you know, if, if you see over there, <laughs> we sell psychometric assessments to employers. So you're always going to say that? Well, no, no. What I'm about to say kind of goes against psychometric <gasps> assessments. Psychometric assessments is is a way of finding out about a candidate yeah. uh, things that they either don't say, aren't aware about themselves, mm. or you are assuming that, well, if they say that, they must be lying anyway. Mm. You know, oh, yeah, you, you would say you were good at this. So if I went into an interview and said, well, I'm, I'm great at managing people, I'm great at managing budgets, I'm great at doing this, mm. then an employer would think, oh, yeah, let's just see what the assessment says. Mm. Uh, because the employer is looking for a third party to to back up what you've said in the interview uh and in fact if the, if an employer was better at interviewing they'd be able to do it now another bugbear of mine frankly is yeah. that most hiring managers and and frankly most recruiters have never had a minute's training on interview mm -hmm. skills they have not a clue it's hard i can't do it at all mm -mm. and they're just making it up as they go along uh, neither can i no, i'm so much on intuition uh, shocking order. Well, yeah. But you know, it's funny that you say that because I was having this conversation earlier today, just saying, yeah, why is there such a reluctance? And obviously, I have a vested interest in saying this, but to to spend yeah. money on the people that bring the people into the company, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. 
because the people make the company, not the friggin' logo, not the branding, not all of those things. It's the people. It never ceases yeah. to amaze me. And there's another example. You just don't even think about it. But yeah, I mean, all the time, I've done the same where I've interviewed people and it's been like, really no clue what I'm doing here, but, you know, <laughs> I liked it's them. It's hard. I hired them. Yeah. They were shit. Yeah, I, I've done that. I've sworn again. <laughs> A lot of people at employers, they, they sit interviewing someone when they have no interest in mm. the candidate or the job and they're nothing to do with it. Yeah. They've simply been asked, can you speak to this person and mm -hmm. tell us what you think? Again, that's because the, the person who's asked them to interview them doesn't trust their own uh, mm -hmm. judgment. But they're saying, well, you yeah. see them and see what you think. So some pure schmuck has got to sit with a candidate and go <sighs> for half an hour and, and at the end say, well, they seem all right to me, you know. Yeah. It doesn't have horns. It uh, doesn't seem great. <laughs> and, and it, it, it can be similar, but, but the return on investment on a bit of uh, interview training yeah, exactly. would be phenomenal. Uh, Especially for hiring managers, I think, because yeah. they really if, don't if spend, You're going to spend but, thousands oh. on the interview process and recruitment mm -hmm. fees. Spend a few bucks on, hire, on, on interview uh, mm -hmm. training. Yeah, it's got to save money in the long term. But I, actually, no, Audra, yeah. I disagree. I think now because there are so many you know, um, in-house recruiters and sources doing that candidate outreach, as you guys love to call it. Mm -hmm. And I cannot say it without doing that. Um, it, I actually think, though, they need training as well because yeah. they are mm. the first pass. Yep. They're deciding whether to pass them over or not, whereas an agency will probably be slightly more lenient and pass more people over. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but, mm -hmm. I mean, very much so hiring managers, but then it becomes quite hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. yeah. Re re remember when... when when people are put forward by a recruitment agency, as, as I'd be putting forward candidates, mm. the recruiter, whenever they submit a candidate to an employer, mm. they are not saying this candidate is the perfect person for that job. What they're saying is they're worthy of interview. Yeah. And it's entirely up to you whether you want to hire them or not. Exactly. So I'm, I might submit five people for a job, and I know that, well, I think candidate number three is the star. And yeah. the, other, the other ones are merely padding just to make mm. it look good that I've submitted five candidates. Mm. Uh, but I'm not choosing the person that gets the job. I don't have the authority to do that. Mm. Uh, that is entirely up to the company. And the company goes and picks candidate number four, who I think is a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's on them. If they pick the wrong yeah. candidate, you know, I can exactly. advise, but yeah. it's entirely down to them. Yeah. So, uh, so when an employer comes back and says, this candidate didn't work out, can we have our feedback? I'm inclined to say, well, you know, you should have taken on the guy I said, not the other idiot. Yeah. So how, how have you seen, uh, sorry, I was t somebody just ping us, I'm turning my email off. Um, when you were talking about the Nora, so obviously there must have been quite a change in the last five years. I know we talked about the mobile side, but yeah. have there been other yeah. changes that have happened because of social media and the internet and visibility? And yeah. God, you know, when I started the Nora's in 2001, uh, I, I wrote a kind of manifesto. <laughs> Of, uh, of what I thought was going to happen in online recruitment. You know, yeah. this will happen, this yeah. will happen. And, so, and it was kind of like the Jetsons, you know, within five years, it'll all be changed, you know. Yeah. Uh, we'll be run by robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, no one will have to apply for a job. Employers mm. will come to you. The work will come to you. Uh, and it'll be so much easier. It'll be automated. Uh, but uh, the stuff that I wrote down in 2001, some of it happened maybe 10 years later. Yeah. And a lot of it, is still to happen, might come around, uh, but it's still to happen. So w w I would really like, as I say, I'm on the side of the candidates, and I would like candidates to push back. I would like candidates to assert themselves, oh. to, uh, to, to unionize, if you like. If the candidates could just organize themselves together and agree, you know, look at each other in, in the virtual eye and say, <laughs> that company, never go there. They're awful. Or mm. this company, they're absolute stars. If candidates could somehow find a way of doing that now, with social media, there's a lot of that information is coalescing, mm. is coming together, mm. where people are are, are, are uh, able to say, this company is great, this company is awful. And the company that's awful should be, should they, at the very least, they should be he picking that up and realizing, well, we, we need to do something about this. Why are we mm. never finding the right candidates? Why well, won't people come to work for us? It's funny you say that, because I going as I mentioned, the rebrand all being announced on Monday, um, going back through all the old blog posts, which is, so tedious but actually really cool at the same time and i picked yeah. up so kate ball had written a, a blog for me several years ago about glassdoor 
and really bad yeah. reviews but they actually did take them and go oh my god and they put a whole load of changes in place because the mm. feedback was so consistent so yeah. I, I love that side of the social media and i love that employee engagement is so important now because social media has meant that you can go online and see how many jobs are out there and you can see what people are saying and all mm. that side so I'm, I'm with you on the side of the user or the yeah. candidate or the job seeker or whatever you want to call them um, i'm a big fan of any platform that allows candidates to push back and say what they think yeah i'm not a, i'm not a big fan or necessarily of Glassdoor because mm. they've kind of they're kind of self-appointed arbiters of what's good and what's bad mm. uh you know they've set up the, the the review shop where everyone can say what they want mm. and if a company wants to manage the reputation they have to pay Glassdoor, mm. and it's a good business model but uh, like TripAdvisor and you know lots of those other review mm. sites, uh, it's subject to all the same market forces that go on. And mm. frankly, a bad review for an employer is great for Glassdoor because that's revenue. You know, a company it feels mm. they have to do something about it. Yeah, but I know lots of companies who sorted it out without paying. And there's yeah, certainly yeah. plenty that you can do, um, which doesn't. Or do we have a comment as well? Yeah. I'm pointing probably the wrong way. I thought you might want to read that out because I feel like I'm talking too much as usual. So this is going back to when you said about if someone wants like a rebate, if they pick the wrong candidate, you should only give a rebate on on fee? Or yeah, yeah. Re rebate on if, fee. On fee, if purple, purple rain applies <laughs> and never money, just replacement at reduced cost. Love it. I love the purple rain reference. Bless you. Yeah. Oh, that's it. I'm not sure to get the reference, but uh, yeah, I, I, I never... Never give money back. Yeah. Replacement fee, maybe, but never give money back. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but I, I, I think you're right because I think it goes to the hiring manager. Sorry, Audra, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question going back to um, we were talking about like ATSs and applying. So over here, the stat is something like, uh, like 217 people apply for every one job. And that's something about, I think, over here. But what? So 216 of them don't get the job to decline. They're disappointed, frustrated. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. what can we do that's better than just this, this generic email that pops out of the ATS? Is there anything that we can do that's better? Oh, that oh, kind of scale? oh, I have to open my presentation. Well, I'm the, hiding the, you for a minute. If I disappear, sorry. There are a whole, there are a whole raft of things that an employer could do, but, mm. but first of all, going back to that, is that, you know, there are 217 people apply for every job. First really? of all, well, first of all, it's not mandatory. You don't have to have, you know, so it's, it's not like uh, you can guarantee that number of applicants. A lot of jobs will get no applications because they're written terribly. Uh, they don't tell you anything about the job and, mm -hmm. and th there's no appeal in the in, in, in the advert itself. So there's a lot, an awful lot of absolutely god-awful uh, adverts out there. Uh, mm. And I speak with job boards an awful lot. And the, 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 the content of every job board is really seriously badly affected by the content that they have from the, that are submitted in job ads because imagine you had a shop and it was full of crap products mm -hmm. uh, but you've got an awful lot of customers coming in every day and they, they, they you know they go through all the shelves and say that's rubbish mm -hmm. that's rubbish that's terrible mm -hmm. so you've got a, a, a whole load of footfall in your store but mm -hmm. no one's buying anything uh, or or you know the proportion of people coming in to those buying is very low. Mm -hmm. Job boards do almost nothing to uh, to encourage good job ads and discourage bad job ads. Yeah. A good job ad, well, from my point of view, a good job ad. First of all, say the name of the employer. A lot of a lot of job adverts from agencies mm. never reveal the name of the employer. Mm. How can I? Well, have, that's not surprising. Have... Well, no, it, it's it is surprising because it's bad practice. As well, a candidate, I would say once they used to call in, but I would never have put it on a job advert. Yeah. Because you could have a, the cowboy, you know what the cowboy agencies are like here? They would just go yeah, straight well, yeah. in around you. Yeah, so if I see an advert, well, oh, if I see an advert as a candidate for for a mystery employer mm. uh, with a mystery job with pound sign competitive, well, if that was an advert for a PC, yeah. you know, we have a PC for sale, it's quite good, we're going to charge you some money, uh, would you like to buy it? Who's going to buy that? Nobody. Yeah. So, any, frankly, any candidate who applies to an anonymous advert for a generic job uh, mm. is an idiot. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and <laughs> what I know, what I know for certainty is that 
that advertise that name the employer uh, mm. they give a good description and uh, and uh, an accurate salary and the location of the job they attract more than four times as many mm. applications and the caliber of applications it's is much higher. higher because yeah candidates have self-selected candidates have said to themselves they've looked up the company and they've said i want to work there or i definitely don't want to work there so the candidates that don't want to work there they've selected yeah. themselves out yeah so that's the employer sifting through more crap. true so Audra, so, to, to answer your yeah. question though i just i have to read you this this is so funny yeah. so somebody i know who is a recruiter is in the process of uh looking for something new and uh, he wrote these guys really know how to put the human touch into recruiting and sends me this hi comma no name right we acknowledge receipt of your resume and application for a position of uh, interim HR consulting and sincerely appreciate your interest. We will be reviewing your resume and qualifications. Qualified candidates will receive an email for a phone interview. Please visit our uh, career page for more. Thank you, interim HR. It was just like, what a fob off. But yeah. I think if you do what Stephen's talking about with the make it better in the first place, but then maybe it's ask them to opt in to a CRM or a... Mm. Even if it's mailchimp like come and join if by choice hey we'll come back to you if you're successful but in the interim hey join us and hear our news and and keep in touch with people like on a marketing side or like what you do I think do you know what employers are scared to get a better a better stuff being said yeah employers are scared of bad candidates that are they're, they're scared mm. of, of candidates who are underqualified overqualified mm. Too keen, too much of a pest, yeah, uh, and, yeah. and not ideal. Apply for every job. Well, yeah, because yeah. when I talk about, um, I think that the job application on a mobile phone should be like online shopping. When click apply, oh my goodness, the backlash I get in a room full of recruiters when I say that is hilarious. <gasps> no, 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 we don't want everyone applying. Oh no, no, no. It's like, oh my yeah. god. But the people, the quality people, the, the the really sought after talent, they just won't put up with that crap. They'll just be like gone. They're not going to go to well, PSC. Yeah. The other thing that I want, I really would like, and I would ask employers to, sorry, job boards to do this, mm. uh, is first of all, make adverts that name the employer cheaper, uh, not more expensive. Right now, they're more expensive. Why? So an ad Because there's going to be more of them. And if there's more adverts that name the employer, then the candidate gets a better experience and the, the applications are going to be of a higher quality level. No, no. Why is so, it more expensive? It's more expensive because the almost all of the job boards certainly in the uk are owned by newspapers by, by uh, publishing enterprises okay uh, and the old model was that if you had a display advert with a logo on it yep. that was more prestigious so they charge more and right. when an employer wants to advertise on monster say yeah they'll pay considerably more per job than joe blogs the agency uh, so the agencies get huge. Oh, okay. Discounts. So you didn't want the agencies to be naming the employer. That's what I thought you meant. Oh, no, I, I do want the agencies to name the employer, oh, right. I, but I want the job boards to give them a discount in in order to do so. Oh, okay. Uh, I I want the jobs with no no named employer yeah. to be put at the bottom of the search results. I want the ones with employers to the top of the search results. Yeah. I also want on each job ad, I want the name of the person who is handling this vacancy. I want that person to mm. be approachable or contactable and again employers are going to say whoa we're going to be snowed under what, what how, how can we handle that mm. do you know with all the technology we have these days mm. it's to totally possible to handle but that you could also i mean i know this sounds kind of wrong because it's a bit deceitful but you know if you are a, a group of 10 in-house recruiters and you just you don't want to have all your 10 names that you could create a persona I know it's a little bit yeah. deceitful, but at least have somebody, even if it's the 10 of you responding using this one specific, yeah. but it, make it yeah. a human being with a face and everything. Um, you're yeah. getting some great feedback over here. Spot on, Stephen. The Cowboys <laughs> will rope a dope and the candidates fall from them and the nondescript job postings. <laughs> and I love Katrina Kinnon's yeah. appearing. Hello, Katrina. Uh, you should know the name of the black hole. You sent all your personal information down. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not Actually, too similar. I, I, Love that. Can, can I just say on, on that point that Katrina mentions there? Mm. Uh, this has always been the case. And I, when I mm. started in recruitment back in the 80s, uh, then I was more. Audrey wasn't born yet. See, you know that. Yes, I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the CCVs of candidates that would have uh, mm. so many bits of information that, that I didn't need. Uh, but all the more so now, if you, if you register with you know Monster or Jobsite or any of the big job boards, yeah. 
people put on a CV that has their passport number, the driving license number, their social security number, their next of kin, the date of birth, oh their home address, all the qualifications, mm-hmm. basically every single thing that an identity thief yeah. would want. Yeah. People are putting them on a, a, a job board. Now, the CV that you put on a job board, the resume you put on a job board, mm. is as free to get as putting it on a post in the middle of the street because yeah. there's no there's no restriction with job boards on okay. anyone joining as you know paying as mm. a, as a as an employer and downloading any number of CVs. <laughs> now, some job boards allow you to keep your CV discreet until asked. Yeah. But for the most part, your CV goes on there. All that information is available to the world. And then people are uh, they're amazed that suddenly the bank account's been compromised. Okay, so something. I I find that a little odd because I mean I, it has been a while since I recruited, to be fair, but not that yeah. long. And I, I mean, obviously, I teach the whole how to, you know, look into the job boards. But I don't yeah. see CVs with that much information on or resumes, as you call them, Audra. But the, I, I will, I get concerned if I see date of birth and full address. Mm. But I don't see all of the other stuff you're talking about. I'm, well, I've never, I've never seen that. Yeah. yeah. Really? Why would anyone? Yeah, it's older. It's <laughs> older people. So when I was leaving school and that's the only reason not to. Um, I was taught to do that. Yeah, no, exactly. But but mm. the, it we were taught to do that to have your full address, your full name, your date of birth, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But obviously, is I mean, the younger ones certainly wouldn't do it. But I've never like, heard it's, of it's, that. it's now unlawful for an employer to ask for your date of birth. Mm. Uh, right. Certainly yeah. in the UK, uh, and there's a number of other things that you can't mm. ask. But. Uh, the, the on, you know, the information on your age can be deduced for the most part from when you went to university or school mm. or any number of things. Mm. Uh, but frankly, candidates offer this information whether they're asked for it or not. Yeah, uh, and, older uh, candidates. I, 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 I do think because the younger CVs, honestly, they don't do it. They just put their name, email, phone number. That's it. If, if you imagine a job board, if you imagine a job board with a million CVs or resumes on there, yeah. Enough of a proportion of those have mm. all those pieces of information on it that I just mm. mentioned uh, okay. that are great for identity thieves. So, you know, if I wanted to pretend to be that other person, now, if I was a devious person, if I was, what say, you mean someone. If you were a devious person. Mm. Yeah, well, let's, <laughs> let's, imagine, mm. let's imagine that I was. I, a call Marge. If, I can call you devious. But imagine, imagine I had. So uh, ignored uh, that. <laughs> imagine I had an enemy imagine I, I had a, a nemesis someone yeah. who career wise worked alongside me and I knew yeah. they were looking for a job mm. well I could easily uh, you know, register with X job board as an employer, mm. look at their CV or I could register as that person on a job board and put slightly misleading information mm. uh, to, mm. to mess up uh, any applications that they might have and so on so th- th- those sort of things can absolutely be done uh, and it's not too mm. difficult. We know that every recruiter in the country has at least one fake LinkedIn account so mm. that they can connect with people that would otherwise not want to connect with them. If I was, if every, I was recruiting... Every recruiter well, if I was, every number. Not every. If I had, if I had Rolls Royce... No wonder Royce they've got 400 million profiles. Yeah. yeah, right. If I had Rolls Royce as a client and I wanted to gather up all the, all, all, all the information on people who worked there, I would simply mm. you know, register on LinkedIn and put down that I was an engineer with Rolls Royce, uh, and connect with all other engineers yeah. in Rolls Royce, and you know, mm. before you know, it, I've got access to all that information. So, <laughs> what I'm saying is that a lot of this stuff is out there, and uh, yeah. candidates should be much more aware of what they should and what they shouldn't be sharing, uh, but also that they uh, they should be pushing back as much as possible and voting with their mouse on jobs and employers that frankly don't uh, don't come up to the standard the required standard yeah. i'm trying to work out if mike's being sarcastic or not yeah okay i don't know just actually have fake linkedin accounts never heard that so i'm actually asking do you yeah. don't know i mean I, I i know somebody in my space who as in teachers in my space has mm. plenty of fake accounts i couldn't be bothered yeah. i just think there's so much you can do with one account but i kind of like where, where you're coming from mm. in that respect i can totally guess what you're talking about <laughs> but I'm so, we're so not saying yeah. because obviously yeah. <laughs> this is for me actually oh it isn't I didn't know that happened oh my goodness Mike yeah no I know someone who's got 50 mm. I, 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 couldn't I, haven't, 
I'm enough trouble with one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just I try and spend as little time on there as possible. When I when I joined, uh, HMS was the name of the recruitment agency I joined when I was 21 in 1987. Yeah. Uh, one of the first things I was asked to do was go. I was still at school. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I, I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed. But one of the first things I was asked to do was go and register with several other agencies to see what they do to candidates. Yeah. How they interview you. Look, So I, we made up a free CV and I would yeah. pretend to be that person. Okay. So from the very start, we were taught to yeah. you know, assume a persona, go and pretend to be that person and, 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 and yeah. investigate the, the competition. That was just mm. normal. And, you know, I, I, I would imagine that recruiters these days have many, many more tools mm. to do the exact same thing. Mm. But I go back to that thing that I love doing in the conferences. They should be doing it to their own jobs. Yeah. They should just, and, and the, I mean, it's so funny when they go, oh my God, I have to register before I can yeah. apply. I'm like, well, get on with it. I'm timing yeah. you. How long is it going to take? And then I, uh, my next thing with that is, well, go in and put your phone down in front of your CEO and say, apply for a job. Mm. Yeah. Who yeah. are you losing? Um, but yeah, I, so, I mean, I think they should do that for themselves and at least see what the competition is up to. In bigger um, companies, that, see that, how they can improve as long as they're going to use it to improve. Yeah. In bigger What's going companies, on over here about, oh, five zero, five zero. Yeah, yeah. I you said 50. 50 LinkedIn accounts, five yeah. zero. Stephen, what do you think about apply with LinkedIn and that kind of thing for phones? <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, <laughs> apply. If, an, if, if a recruitment agency is using apply with LinkedIn, then they're feeding the competition because LinkedIn, frankly, let's face it, is a competitor to recruitment agencies. Uh, if a job board is using apply with LinkedIn, again, they're doing the same thing. Mm. Uh, so whilst it, it is a good thing, personally, for, from my point of view, I'm relatively uh, 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 ambivalent about the power of LinkedIn. I know that it's not all that it could be. Uh, oh. But LinkedIn is absolutely a critical mass and beyond where I think it's fine uh, to have you know a public CV on there effectively. Uh, of uh, uh, you know th that you can then attach to any job application. Uh, so I think if you're applying so on your phone, you LinkedIn, that's totally fine. Sorry. Who are you recruiting? So if you're recruiting nurses, they're not on LinkedIn, yeah. so it should be applied by Facebook. Now, of course, that freaks people out. Yeah. It freaked me out the first time I saw it. However, that's where they are. That's where 1.59 billion people are. There's well, only 400 million people on LinkedIn. So are you making them create a LinkedIn account to apply? You know, why not have apply by you know, grab your CV from Dropbox, grab your CV yeah. from Drive, yeah. um, apply by whichever social network you know. At the end of the day, it could be just a form. Here's my yeah, phone but, number yeah. and my email and a bit of blurb. We'll call but How you. many nurses or truck drivers have their CV on Dropbox? You know, no, they don't. Like, then have apply by Facebook, but don't. No, it may well. Just well, having, well, just well, having well, apply by LinkedIn annoys me. But if you apply by Facebook, how how is your how is your CV, your resume going to be somehow located on Facebook? There isn't the fields aren't there really to complete uh, all that you've got on your LinkedIn. Uh, well, they are if you've updated your profile, which LinkedIn, which Facebook is pushing you to do all the time when you're well, on the mobile. I never noticed well, you, that. When LinkedIn had click sorry, on your bio. When Facebook had uh, uh, remember. Uh, okay. Branch out and what was the one from Monster? Uh, I branch out died. That's a shame. So, so branch out and be known were they didn't work out. Yeah, they were really, really badly executed. But yeah. they were great idea because essentially what they were doing was they had a separate level, a separate layer yeah. of connections that were entirely yeah. for work and business and so on. That were separate mm. to your layer of connections of friends and family and so on. Mm. And there could be overlap between the two. That that's that's fine. But it was a separate mm. layer of connections, much like circles. Yeah on Google. Yeah. So uh, the principle of that is fantastic. Uh, mm. But uh, Facebook have frankly just taken ages to get around to it and I, I can't see them doing it yeah. anytime soon. Well, I'd like to see so that I'm in my edit, you probably can't see it, but I'm in my profile yeah. on my phone and it yeah. says like edit bio. And what I love is you can set yourself like a real personal brand by picking mm. the five photos mm. where you're not looking drunk in the gutter that you <laughs> look like featured pictures. Um, but they really push all the time edit info so and, mm. and add stuff. And yeah, right. I think more and more yeah. buyers are getting filled out. But, you know, you can find people other ways. So, yes, you're mm. right. But I guess when it's a nurse, if they just say they're a registered nurse at this hospital, that's enough. You don't need more than that. But what I was more getting at is you're excluding people by only having yeah. a part by LinkedIn. 
well, I, I, the, again, it's quite a small pool of people, and people all the time think it's the answer. It's like it's a really small. Well, pool. yeah, if, if you think about LinkedIn as a patchwork quilt of all yeah. the people in all the professions, there are big holes in the patchwork quilt, and there are some that are completely filled in. So, for yeah. example, every single recruiter in the country has a LinkedIn account and Sales several others. Yeah. yeah. So you could absolutely say that LinkedIn is the biggest, the most comprehensive database of every recruiter in the world because yes. it just is. Uh, yeah. So the, of all the professions, that's the one that must be at the very top who are who have LinkedIn accounts. Yeah. Once at the bottom, you know, people who are road sweepers working for the council, swimming instructors, uh, and so on and so on. Why would ooh, they ever ooh, have a LinkedIn? Account? Very, very careful saying that. Yeah. So I well, had I'm, I had a blog post. Um, I'm generalised. Yeah, yeah. So I had a blog post that was along those lines, and somebody from LinkedIn jumped on this blog post yeah. and went on about only you know X number of people on Facebook are professionals, blah blah. blah. And my very close friend, who's a um, physio, and her husband is a surgeon they jumped on and just slated this guy, just going, who do you think you are? We don't have LinkedIn profiles. She's a physio. Mm -hmm. They recruit physios by Facebook. They go out to their network. They just go, we've got an yep. opening. Who do you know? And they, yep. they do old-fashioned networking. So, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'd just be a little bit careful with that because it's all sorts of professions. Yeah, all I'm, say, all I'm saying is that there, there the are big color. gaps on LinkedIn that are, that are not populated yeah. Yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, and LinkedIn should have, I imagine they will have, a strategy for bringing those people in. Uh, now, a lot of people, frankly, mm -hmm. would never go on LinkedIn when it was only on a desktop. Uh, yeah. But now that they've got access to mobile, and we all know that LinkedIn's uh, uh, mobile app is, is far better than what you get in the desktop. Uh, it's it's yeah, more, I think so. it's, it's not entirely intuitive, but it's better mm -hmm. in a lot better. of ways, a lot of things you can do. You don't uh, get that so, top thing. I don't really like it. Yeah. yeah, I do love um, John's comment over here. Apply by text or chat on WhatsApp for yeah. applicants. I love that. Absolutely love mm. that. You know, when yeah. having just come back from Asia, WhatsApp is, they were yeah. all chatting to me, sending me photos, doing all sorts of stuff on WhatsApp. All had dug me out in no time at all. Yeah. Um, it's well, huge. Well, and again, when I was in Romania last year, it's all Facebook and Instagram. LinkedIn doesn't make a mention. Twitter doesn't make a mention. But these are just tools by which you send the information. So the information yeah. has to be sent. The employer wants to know about you, uh, yeah. and you want to tell the employer about But it's about the yourself. first step of the candidate yes. journey, isn't it, getting them to so, apply? Yeah, so even, even if a job said, uh, uh, you know, here's the vacancy, blah, 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 are you interested, send a text. So you send a text or you hit the button, you give them your email address. At some point, at some point, they want to know more. So at some point, yeah. you have to give them that information that you need to either, you know, email your CV uh, mm. or whatever. But uh, the email in a CV is a lot easier on your phone than applying through a website and mm. attaching a, a, a document. You can't yet attach a document from yeah. your files on your iPhone. No. Uh, you can do it on Android, can't you? No, I don't think so. You can't access your file I, system. I don't think any of them, because seriously, iPhone would be on a hot trot if you could on Android. What about what about on a Windows phone? What's a Windows <laughs> yeah, phone? I feel like you must be on Windows. Phone? Phone? So you can get to your files easy. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I would, I oh, would yeah, hope you can get to Dropbox. That, uh, yeah, John's right. You can get to Dropbox and Drive. Mm -hmm. And good, yes. yeah. I keep calling you John. You are John. I'm sure you're John. We have this conversation every time he comes on. Hiding again, behind his resourceful UK. <laughs> again, Drive is not a document that's on your phone. It's it's in the cloud, and not everyone has yeah. Box or Drive or you know cloud based storage. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it's I, free. Know, I know, but it's like you can't. What I'm yes, saying is, true. give multiple options. Yeah, but still, but getting it's, getting it's, LinkedIn is better than nothing at all. At least yeah, it, it's as, as Chris Rock would say. Just because a thing can be done doesn't mean that it will be done. Mm. So, you know, it, 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 there's there's that inertia that stops uh, or, you know, pushes people to do certain things. Mm. Uh, and unless there's enough people doing it, unless it becomes a thing, mm. then most people will hold off until it's absolutely essential. Mm. So, you, you know, you know, last year when people were doing the, uh, the, the bucket challenge, yeah. uh, Huge numbers of folk all over the world suddenly found that they were filming themselves on this and yeah. posting to YouTube, and they never had before. Mm. So they knew that there was a video camera in there, yeah. and they knew that it could be done, but they didn't have a reason to use it. So mm. all of a sudden, they're filming themselves, and they're going, 
hold on a second, I'll just set up a YouTube account. Oh, it's the same as my Gmail, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So uh, they suddenly find that they can do something because they've got a reason to do it. Mm. And when people are applying for a job, they may or may not find that a compelling reason to mm. go and sign up for certain technical services. But of course, people look for a job once every, some people every six mm. months, uh, mm. but, but maybe on average, once every couple of years, people are looking for a job. And each time, all the technology has changed entirely. Actually, I was just thinking while you were saying that actually apply by indeed could be quite good because of the whole if you google like hr manager jobs london or whatever it is what's at the top so yeah. I, that would be the but one I'm, i'd be wanting to use because when you're on there they're constantly saying give me your cv every page you flick to give me a cv give me a cv yeah. so if you if people but are indeed, loading their cv indeed. there then use that as an apply by Indeed, are a, comp a competitor as well to all the agencies. Indeed, started as an aggregator. Yeah, no, I know, but we're talking about candidates applying. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to give them well, a way to apply. Yeah, so can, but as an employer, you have mm. to say, well, I'm fine with candidates applying through Indeed, mm. or as an agency, or, or, mm. or you have to be okay with that. Mm. And that means that their information is going on to Indeed and is then available for anyone else in Indeed to pick mm. up. Yeah, and a candidate might, candidate, might but... not want to be sharing their CV with the world. A candidate may well want to apply directly to that employer, not tell anyone a, a single thing about it. Well, in that case, they can go old school. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, apply directly and upload a CV on a desktop. Then they've got the well, choice okay. to go to a desktop. But I'm talking about but, those that want to, on their journey yeah. home, sitting there, yeah. you know. Yeah. Or Let because obviously way, yeah. I, everything I do is in that social media space, so I'm always talking yeah. about you know, not all the time, but just occasionally sharing a job yeah. or if they found somebody and they're sending it via an email, it's likely they're going to read it on their phone. So well, let me put it this way. Uh, every recruitment agency owner or boss in the country uh, mm -hmm. are looking on all the job boards or have an alert on all the job boards for any of their own staff <laughs> registering and applying for a job. Uh, and uh, so they're getting alerts as to when that happens as and when it happens. And, and how pathetic is that? Well, it, it I mean, why not look after your staff? Why not make it so that they don't want to leave? Mm -hmm. Why not well, but <laughs> be the, bit, the employer of choice so you don't have to do that? Well, that's, it's not that's, that hard that, to do. That's a much bigger question. You know, why, why aren't employers as good as they can be? Well, because they're not. Uh, you know, em employers are what they are, and employers uh, represent the aggregate of all the personalities of the people who are running the company. Uh, and sometimes that's pretty shit, and sometimes it's fantastic. Uh, I think if you, you if you have if you've sat there and thought to go and go okay right let's put Audrey Knights mm. in with an alert let's put Stephen O'Donnell in but there is something wrong with you like fundamentally <laughs> wrong oh, you, that's how you're starting is like my staff and my staff you will not touch them it's like well the world doesn't work yeah, like that anymore you don't, um, you no you, but, but but I. I would say, frankly, that's a fundamental misunderstanding of what recruiters are like. We're all nosy parkers. <laughs> I want to know about. I love oh, that's finding not out. Nosy. That's weird. No, no, but but uh, the biggest thing, the biggest appeal for me about recruitment is when I'm interviewing someone. There's a real intimate connection. They're telling me things that they wouldn't tell anyone else. They wouldn't tell their partners. They're telling them, you know, yeah. they're telling me what salary they're on, how they feel about their boss, how yeah. they feel about their careers. Sometimes it can be really emotional. They can break down. And uh, yep. sorry, flap dog. <laughs> but it's it's a real intimate situ situation. Yeah. So uh, uh, recruiters are nosy parkers, and I certainly am. Mm. So I I would absolutely look mm. up someone on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, you, you you better believe I've looked up. Uh, uh, you and Audra uh, on LinkedIn and Twitter and so on because I, but all the I, don't, right here, I don't mind that but to put alerts on job boards for if they're looking for a job what the fuck's wrong with you if I had, um, but if I had an account on Monster if I had an account on Monster then I absolutely yeah. could easily just type in oh I wonder if Katrina's ever registered on Monster no you may not have probably but, but if you are then I'll see your CV and it, it wouldn't be odd to do that. It really wouldn't because, oh, you know, because I'm a... But well, you know what? The, the, so what you I, love, I, well, I love what John's written here. Recruitment agency owners and managers are the most insecure people. They hire quickly and fire quicker, even much levers out the door. And I agree. And I was treated like he's, he's, shit. He's I'm wrong. sorry, that's four swear words. Um, <laughs> when I was at Spring. But yeah. I used to get called every day by Rectorex. So... Yeah. 
they worked out that I worked at Spring and called me. They saw my LinkedIn yeah. profile. They yeah. saw whatever. I mean, they just called. So well, it's like, if you're not, what is the then point then of doing that? Not. Look after your staff, whether they're going onto a job board or not, they're being called. And whether right. they're recruiters yeah. or not, they're being That's called. True. So, if you've not been sorry, headhunted, you've not been all fired up. Yeah. yeah. No, no, that, but that's, that's perfectly normal. Yeah. But Stephen, what do you do with that information? Okay, say you, they're they're looking for jobs everywhere. You know, they're actively looking. What do you do? Just like treat them like crap and hope they quit? Like, can you well, no, no. The, the, the thing is, is we have to get through that phase of getting the information, thinking it means something, and then getting oh. over it. So the point, the point will come in the fairly near future where employers will say, well, Okay, everyone who works here potentially can be looking for a job elsewhere. Everyone's open to a better offer at mm -hmm. some point. Everyone has their price. So uh, employers could get to the point of of you know uh, uh, just calmness, where they understand that that's how the world works, and realizing that they themselves would accept a better offer if it came along. So once, once you get to that point of serenity, then uh, maybe. Uh, you can call yourself civilized, but up until that yeah. point, you're I'm being flirted with massively on the side here, digressing. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle, Jeremy's trying to go. I miss this one. Oh, oh, oh. Blessing, Jeremy. But I love <laughs> <laughs> someone's in love with your accent. <laughs> you got a bag. You have to get our digits. Oh, up to the I'll, I'll, I'll send out his private details yeah. later. You can find him on Facebook. You don't have to send them out. They're all over everywhere. I, I... You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> but I mean, going back to what you're saying, I still think it comes back to, and I, I think one of the lovely things about the whole internet and social media is that employee engagement is so important. Now you've got to look after your staff. It comes back to that. Yeah. So, Audrey, if they're seeing that you're looking, then they should be sort of saying, really without mentioning that, but that, Hey, how are you? You know, how are you going? What can we do mm. to make it better for you here? Yeah. Do you have any feedback for me? But they have to be open to hearing it. It's not necessarily nice to hear negative feedback. Mm -hmm. But maybe if they just took the time and let people be heard, mm. yeah. isn't that all what we want? Who do you think should yeah. own employee engagement? Do you think that should be recruitment or who owns? Who do you well, think in like a company, in an well, internal company, not staffing agent? Can know? I tell you that the, the last job that I had, the last actual boss that I had in 1993, uh, when I was resigning. He, he said to, to go and start up a new agency. He said, "Yeah." He said, "Well, remember this day." He said, "Because once you're an employer, you instantly yeah. become once once you hire staff, you instantly become their social worker. Your their problems are suddenly going to be your problem." Yeah. Uh, yeah. So employee employee engagement is frankly it's all tied in with that where yeah. you're you're compelled somehow to look after the 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 the, the worldly needs of people who are working for you. To one or other degree, you might ignore it entirely. You might say, "Well, okay, if someone has a problem, maybe I'll try and help them out in it." But frankly, uh, employee engagement is is about you know be nice, be respectful, yeah, uh, yeah. and tell and tell the truth. So if someone's doing a good job, tell them. If they're doing a bad job, tell them and help. Them. Mm -hmm. If they're doing an awful job, escort them off the premises. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's everybody's responsibility. I don't yeah. just think it's HR. I mean. I think one of the joys and because of the internet is HR's had to come out of its bubble of being police and become yeah. more a recruiter and become look after the employees and all that kind of stuff. They've had to get out and talk to the business, which is great. But I yeah. see it as everybody's responsibility. It's, you know, who your immediate team leader is. It's who your management are up the line. It's it's everyone's responsibility. Yeah, yeah. But so, if, if all these people didn't have individual personalities, it would be oh, so much easier. I know. We should just get robots in. Yeah, uh, isn't that what you said back in two thousand and one was going to happen? <laughs> I, I, I thought it was. Though. Damn it! <laughs> oh, Not the robots, but mm. oh, but I'm hovering over something. Oh, look at that's so cute. John's sharing recruiting daily stuff. Jackie, Katrina, take note. <laughs> Jerry, recruiters are going to be measured by placements. HR needs to take care of them once they're in house. So true. Mm. God, the banter down the side's gone nuts and we're just finishing. See, people shouldn't be late. <laughs> Goodness me, 55 minutes have gone by. I know, it has. It has indeed. Have I been talking all this time? Yes, but I'm not surprised. You are Scottish. <laughs> Thank you very much. You made a few girls. I think that's a compliment. It, actually, worse, you're Glaswegian. So. No, I strictly speaking, I'm from Airdrie, which is halfway between Glasgow and Edinburgh. So, uh, so you're on the fence. It's it's known as the perineum of Scotland. It's exactly oh. between 
Glasgow and, <laughs> and... <laughs> I am so so much brilliant. <laughs> right, well, thank you, thank you so much. Such an yeah. entertaining club. Sorry to those yeah, that no. came in late. I don't know how many alerts. Our alerts aren't working. I don't think. <laughs> um, next week we have a the ever fabulous Mervyn Dinan, so another one from the UK, chatting. Mm. Um, and we are going to be talking. I can't remember what we're going to talk about. He told me earlier, and I've completely gone out of my head. Um, but he's all about content and using content well and stuff. So it'll be similar, I would imagine. But it will Perfect. be a lot of fun. So you'll have to watch this space the same time next week. So thank you again. Any final thoughts, Stephen, before you disappear? Uh, oh, you had a book. What's the book? Candace Ooh. Pushback. I had a book. Ooh. You, you book. Would, Oh, no, that's Mervyn. Oh, God, my brain. Sorry. I'm still <laughs> my brain. Singapore. <laughs> I don't know, no. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, to plug for next week. Actually, actually, but before I go, uh, True Edinburgh is next Wednesday, and uh, anyone in the vicinity is very, very welcome. Please come along. Cool, awesome, wonderful. There is nothing in the vicinity besides Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you again. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks, Bye. Thanks, then. Adios.